carriers could be uh, regulated and registered by the Public Service Commission. In 1996, Congress passed the first major revision of, this, of the national telecommunications laws since 1934. And in doing so, they really recognized that here again, we're moving from a monopoly environment and, and opening up voice services to competition from other carriers and allowing other providers to use the networks of these incumbent carriers. And by the way, let me point out, there's a, for those of you that like this kind of thing, there's a map in the back of the room of the incumbent telephone carriers that are in Missouri now, and they're divided up in, in their uh, service areas, if you want to take a look at that later on. So in 1996, Congress did that, opened up, opened up the uh, voice market, the local voice market to competition from other types of carriers. That same year, the Missouri legislature responded to that congressional move and passed House Bill uh, 507, which recognized competition in local, in local voice service and established a new category of competitive carrier. You, you may have heard them referred to as an alternative carrier or a competitive carrier, a competitive local exchange carrier. All those types of companies that uh, either use their own facilities-based network to reach a customer or actually uh, early on in, in the law would, would lease the network from an incumbent carrier to reach out and serve, and serve a different customer. So that was in 1996. In 2001, the legislature focused on uh, uh, a issue that was kind of the, the byproduct of all this competition. There were a lot of providers out there who were uh, digging up the, the, the right of way, putting in, putting in their own facilities, trying to reach customers, trying to be competitive, and there needed to be a change in the statute that would recognize that we've got some new players in the right of way, and there's, there's gotta be a new way to manage that. So in 2001, the legislature passed uh, legislation that um, kind of updated and modernized uh, municipal ordinances as it relates to the management of the right-of-way. In 2005, that was the first major revision to the state's telecommunications law that had passed in 1996. It allowed these incumbent carriers that I mentioned, kind of the historic local telephone companies, more pricing flexibility and other types of incentives in order uh, giving them the opportunity to compete with cable providers, wireless providers, other types of competitive companies. Uh, that for the first time, the, the local uh, carriers, the local uh, incumbent carriers, could offer uh, discounts and other incentives in order to keep com uh, customers that they might be otherwise losing to a competitive carrier. In 2007, the Missouri legislature passed um, a legislation that uh, established the ability for uh, cable, both cable providers and telecommunications providers to offer video services on a statewide basis. You may recall uh, early on in, in the history of, of cable TV that cable companies had to go city to city to city in order to get the rights to offer cable television uh, within a municipal, municipal boundary. In uh, 2007, the legislature adopted a plan where a cable company or a telecommunications company could get a statewide franchise to offer that service uh, in, any, uh, in any part of the state. Here again, it was, a, it was a great way for the legislature to respond to the presence of competition from telecommunications carriers uh, and other cable companies. 2008, more, more uh, legislation that, that, again, reflected the growing competition that uh, incumbent carriers and, and competitive carriers were getting from cable providers offering uh, voice services over their networks. You may have heard uh, the phrase VOIP, V-O-I-P, uh, Voice Over Internet Protocol. It's the way by which, it's the way by which cable companies offered voice service to their customers, and uh, the law that was passed in 08 recognized that this new competitive service uh, needed a lighter regulatory touch. In fact, the whole industry needed a lighter regulatory touch, and uh, so the legislature passed a law to uh, 
to enable voice providers, whether they're cable providers or, or telecommunications providers, to compete on kind of an equal footing. 2010, and this really gets into the minutia here, in 2010, Missouri began to reform what is called the intra-state uh, access charge system. For many years, telecommunications companies had and continue uh, to pay one another for the use of their networks. If you call somebody in another part of the state, the, the telephone company that you're placing that call on would pay that carrier to terminate the call on their system. And over the years, uh, it became necessary to reform that system and it was again in response to the competitive nature of the, of the telecommunications market. So in that year, uh, the, the state's three largest carriers, AT&T, CenturyLink, and Windstream, were required to begin reducing the rate that they, that, uh, they charge other carriers to, to terminate um, calls on their system. Now, there was a three-year plan that was adopted by the legislature that was kind of trumped, to some extent, by uh, the FCC. That year, the FCC issued an order uh, late in 2011 that uh, required further decreases in those intrastate rates. So that, that area of regulation has really kind of now, for the most part, become the purview of, uh, the, of the FCC. Uh, let's see, where are we? Uh, okay. 2011, uh, more legislation that, again, reflected that the retail, certainly the retail market, the, the relationship we have with our customers at the retail level is changing, and regulation was, was being changed in reaction to that. 2013, for those of you that, that were serving in 2013, you remember the two large pieces of legislation that passed that year, House Bill 331 and 334, uh, they, they did a number of things. Uh, reformed the Municipal Right-of-Way Administration, created a uniform method of, of municipal regulation of utility towers, eliminated certain PSC uh, retail regulation, clarified that broadband is not a subject, it's not a service that is subject to PSC control, and regulated other fees that municipal utilities charge for the use of right-of-ways. Now you may recall that year uh, that that bill was challenged in circuit court. There was the uh, the charge or the uh, the uh, the case involved uh, a perceived problem with the title and the enacting clause and the single subject issue uh, as it relates to how those bills were were uh, uh, passed by the legislature and signed into law. In response to that, last year in 2014. The legislature took the subject matters of those two bills and reenacted them, divided them and took, took them from two bills and divided them into five separate bills, all of which addressed a separate issue. And that is that was their response to uh, passing those in a way where it had a clear title of a single subject for the for those uh, bills. You may recall those passed very very. Uh, rapidly last year in the legislature were signed into law by the governor. Two of those uh, right now are being challenged again in circuit court, and those cases are still pending. The other two that, that were passed uh, are, are now in law. Yeah. So as we move from 2014 to 2015, um, over, the, over the summer, the industry and other stakeholders have been working with uh, the staff of the Missouri Public Service Commission to take their, regu their regulatory scheme and, and reshape it to reflect the stat statutory changes that the, leg the legislature has made, especially over the last eight to 10 years. So they have had a couple of working groups with the industry stakeholders and others uh, to, to help sh reshape and consolidate those telecommunications rules that are on the books. That effort is now still continuing. Uh, I believe the, uh, the rulemaking process has now moved into the, the formal process where we will we'll see some public hearings on those uh, probably late, later this year. So in about 10 minutes, that's the last 30 years in telecom uh, regulation and legislation. Again, the key point that I really hope you take away from this presentation 
is that the legislature and, and regulators have responded to changes in technology, changes in customer expectations, and changes in a very competitive marketplace in the types of, of uh, legal and, and regulatory changes they have made to the statutes. And we, we appreciate that. We think that, that type of, of uh, response has certainly helped uh, reshape our market so that it becomes really focused on consumers and meeting the needs of consumers in ways that you know, we, we, right now we probably can't imagine how we'll do that over the next two years. But um, that, that's my message to you tonight. Uh, I, as Chairman Corman asked if, if I would give just a, a relatively brief and just kind of top level type of presentation on the high points over the years. Now, I know it's a, it sounds like a lot of minutia, but in general, uh, the response has been from the legislature to reshape statutes in order to reflect what's going on in the marketplace and with customer uh, customer expectations. A couple of th one thing I did want to mention tonight. Everybody in the room got introduced, which was good. I did want to mention that uh, Mr. Galloway with uh, CenturyLink is the chairman of our the Legislative Affairs Committee at our association. Mr. England is the chairman of our Regulatory Affairs Committee. And, and uh, glad to have both of them here this evening. Let me take just 30 seconds, and just 30 seconds more to tell you a little bit about our association. I'm very proud to say that our association is now in its 102nd year as an organization representing telecommunications carriers in Missouri. Obviously, we've changed a lot in that time. Uh, we started, of course, as representing probably two or 300 local telephone companies at the turn of the last century. Uh, now, we're, as I said, we've got about uh, 40 local carriers. We also include uh, uh, wireless carriers, uh, competitive carriers, network operators, and providers. So as just as our industry has changed over the last century, uh, we've changed our association as well. I've had the opportunity to serve as, as the association's president over the last 15 years, and uh, it's been an absolute pleasure and continues to be an absolute pleasure to work with members of the legislature uh, to, to really grapple with the, the types of public issues that we face to help make uh, help make this a better state and help us serve Missouri it's even better than we have. So be glad to answer any questions you might have. Any questions for good question. Um, what has been the the cost of basic telephone service from nineteen eighty four to now? I mean, I remember in college, if I made a phone call from Columbia to Jefferson City, it was like 25 cents a minute. Yeah. I mean, it was a ridiculous price. Um, I don't think that's quite the price today. Can, can you talk a little bit about that and where that's going? Well, a lot, and, and those of you in the room that want to jump in, please do. Um, a lot of that price uh, and the cost, historically, obviously is reflected in the cost of technology, um, the the method by which you know we we paid one another to share those networks that were important that that those networks stay in place and there there be a revenue source for that, and you know it's just we've just gotten better and and been able to bring down the price with with better technology uh, and and just changes changes in in, in regulation that that allow us to uh, to be more competitive. In any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate it. Appreciate the opportunity. Is that close to photo mode in one of your photos? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Wish I even knew what that was. <laughs> Most of my life just gone. I feel bad. I just found out about it. Yeah, I want to go myself. Photo, my son yeah. is big photo in the photo. Photo bombing. What could that mean? Right. Yeah. He loves to be able to jump in people's photos. It's funny. Yeah. He thinks it's cute. Yeah. yeah. I kind of like that. That's a commercial on TV where the gal is just talking about, you know, about uh, she's posting, he, posting pictures to her wall. She's got a blue. Yeah. She's got a blue. Think, the same thing yeah. with the candy crush. Yeah. yeah. I don't think it works like this. I don't think any of this works. Like this. Uh, yeah, I'll be friending you. Yeah, friending you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
That's not how it works, Grandma. <laughs> yeah, I like when she's came crushing with the hammer. Pieces were flying all over the kitchen. You want to talk about an annoying game anyway? I got hooked on that too. I'm not going to lie. My wife played it for a while. And I, I fought it and fought it and fought it. And one day she sent me, I need, a, I, I need something. Just do it to send me things. So I was like, all right. I signed up. started playing it just to send her, you know, like candy gifts or whatever. Next thing you know, I'm hooked. I'm playing up on level like 300. I was like, really? How much of my life am I wasting playing this game? <laughs> I heard in Europe there's actually a problem with it where people go to a free house. Typically, just kind of my life. So, when they end up going to school, I know some people that play that long distance call. I think the only reason they have a cell phone is to play. So, the connection was good. My wife here, we did on the stage, gave me a little comic place. This woman made my first hand correct. It was just color of the day. My son and wife play like Clash of Clans. Yeah, it yeah. cost me. And he is trying so really hard, hard 15 cents a minute. He's not big in call. He's not big in call. He's not big in call. It's kind of hard. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I just find there's so much more things we can do with our time rather than play the video games. And one of the commissioners, you know, kind of understood. Although I will say sometimes it's fun to play with my boys. Even though they beat me out all the time. That's the fun side, too. I'm 10 and 7. <laughs> So we're all in it. I'm just waiting for one of them, you know, my 10 year old. I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's coming close to what he wants his own free calls. He's going to learn he's not getting one. <laughs> 10. So. Yeah, it's just got to be I don't know. I mean, I see kids nowadays that are well, I can see the security side to it. For the one, they have GPS on it all the time. They can call 911. They can call home. I mean, I do see the reason for that. My son didn't even know what a payphone was. I had to show because I showed him one. It didn't even work. But I was trying to explain him, explain it to him that you know this is how I used to actually call home for my ride which I'm picking up from the beach. You know. My son was talking to you when he was allowed to go out to three counties and it was in like junior senior center and they got him off of the boat to accept part. And then men call in and merge in with a circle of all these calls. Like a district. There is some. Going back up to the same outside legislation that actually requires some of these to make a phone call. Because you have over a second of the work that I've been on that stage. He has a rotary dial phone. <laughs> 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 you know how to do it? And when you think about what is intuitive about, well, I take your finger, just take your finger and just turn it around. He was probably thinking he could just take his finger and push a button. Yeah. There was no lab. I'm sure he was pressing on the right. I don't know how it works. What's this big thing here? Well, my son and I, um, 2011, 2012, when I was running my campaign, we were knocking on neighborhood on a Saturday afternoon. There was a yard sale, and he, of course, you know, I'm very attracted to you know fire trucks, things like that. So he calls me over there, and my littlest boy is looking at this uh, ambulance, two dollars. I'm like, sure, you can get that, buddy. And my other son comes over, and he has his hand cassette tapes. Dad, what are these? <laughs> I said, well, son, you know those things that you call CDs and DVDs? And he was, I said, that's kind of like what that was in my day. I said, there, I can go one further, though. We have a thing called an 8-track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He's like, what's that? I said, same thing, only bigger. <laughs> that was great quality music. Or just chunk, chunk. And I remember my first 8-track take was Kenny Rogers. <laughs> my dad gave it to me. I used to sing that, Rudy, Don't Take Your Love to Town. Or I remember the first record I'm very instead of that was a pretty rough out there. My mother found it here and played in the stereo. Were they convinced if you played it backwards, it said yes. certain things? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, it didn't last long enough. So broken into pieces. I was just explaining to my boys how you know cell phones have come. I said, you guys, I said, you guys don't understand this. I said, but I can remember like my buddy he, his first cell phone was this big, huge tan, had a big old battery and this big case to it. I said it had a cord. Remember bag phones? Yes. Exactly. Oh yeah, I remember bag phones. They were big in the military. <laughs> But yeah, he's like, what? And I said, yeah, you know the thing you can stick in your pocket now? He goes, yeah. said, no, you want to put this in your pocket. Yeah. Maybe a backpack. <laughs> we, have, we have a little uh, museum just at the office, you know, equipment for the agents. 
working and I was in getting a new wireless phone one day and there was an old, it looked like an old walking talkie, uh -huh. you know, one of the first you know, sitting on the counter. And I said, what is this doing here in the master well, We had a farmer from Osage County that came in and wanted to trade it in. He kept, it, he kept it plugged on his tractor and he would call his mom and say, you know, get lunch ready on the dog. And so we traded it in. There's that old red barn on the next one. Well, you go down. He got it by his take. You go down to the old take place. Yeah. 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 And, and the old McConnell yeah. place yeah. Children's was like three generations ago, yeah. 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 but it's still the old McConnell place. Boys or 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 my days are over and rolling. So I don't know if you know where those are in Cedar County, but those are fun. Those are funny. You wrap around your face. You know, you pick a left there. Yeah, I saw the boys go start to try and walk. Are you serious committee meeting you got going on today? No, I, 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 I know, I think you scared the rest of the members off by saying, guys, I just want you to know the media will be here. When are they not in our committee? committee here? I always see them. So I didn't see it as anything different. That's why I was beating up on Eli out there. I said, I can't believe he's beating me up. <laughs> you know, I'm glad to have somebody from the New York Times here. You're just fascinated. Yeah, I guess it's so fascinating. This doesn't make it for the up above the fold. I'm disappointed. If that's even a thing anymore. No, I saw him here once before. It was the last time he was here is when I saw him here. You here once? Yeah, I was here too that day. I saw him. Some of them have to actually five years. Four or five times. I'm not sure. That's going to be the big problem. Fire is funded. I don't think all of this is going to be spread. Here's the risk also. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it actually applies to wireless carriers. You can lose balls out here just like you can. Well, no, I'm going to do that. Dolphins and Safari, I mean, I spend more time in the woods and on the green. <laughs> That's why I never put my initials on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think it's great advertising, man. I have these little tattoos that say Ron Hick, state representative, and I put those on the golf balls because when I lose them, I know really someone's going to find it one day. It's advertising. Why that man across the wall? I put Tim Jones on the golf from like four years ago. Yeah, it's going to be a really expensive one. I just, I just went to a bundle. It was for uh, Wyatt Central. I just went to a bundle. Fundraiser. Central Prison. No, it wasn't Eureka. Well, That's the that. prison. I have a bundle. The one with Tim Lowe. Yeah, I get the internet. Thank you. Let me tell you how stupid I was. Between direct TV. We don't have time. Oh, it was like three hours from my house. We went through it. 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 Yeah. 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 I had to yeah. I call him up and the guy yeah. Yeah. Well, I remember yeah. now for yeah. that late two days ago because I got no, it wasn't that here late. I had an old modem and they I think it was in the district actually. Did you call uh, the customer uh, service representative or did you call uh, Doug Galloway? Yeah. Yeah. No, the next time you called Doug. What did you do? I never say I've got it. 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 But the, the one thing about this one is, oh, it was a, it was a nine volt in your issues. Why don't take so I think it's going to take more. See, I only play, I try to only play the nine volt courses <laughs> right now. It helps me with my short game. But the legislation calls for a back then was actually a, a surcharge on cell phones. A trade stop. Wow. So you would have a surcharge on cell phones. We'd have some revenue coming. You could put your clothes on away from that. So you could you ride the local train out and it wouldn't convert jam and the whole cost of the hour. You learn something new every day. I do know that I'm sure. Yeah, 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 I'm s
So how many times did you take the train? Out? Yeah, like, yeah, was, yeah. Kind of, I just ride the horse. I tell you, that's one of the things that sold me on the state of Missouri, though. Yeah, I'm, I'm originally from California. Still, yeah. Not Missouri? No, not Missouri, California. Even though I have been there a couple of times. I've got buddies from there. With Jones, Caleb Jones. But, um, I took the train to Missouri and back. Yeah, I think you need to take the train to the train. The other thing that people from St. Louis to Jeff City and back. It was during the fall and the tournament. Oh, my. I saw Eagle. I've never done that, but I keep thinking. Which one? Well, you can get a lot get a lot done on the train. I was sold right away. You know, being from California, yeah, everyone's like, you got beautiful weather and this, that. You do. It's nice. But that's just it. You don't have to change the seasons like you do in a state like this where you get to see winter and summer. So then again, that. I mean, it's beautiful. Snow. Although they got to play in the snow in California this year. Yeah, friends got to send me pictures. They had two, three inches of snow on their palm trees. Speaking of snow, have you seen the pictures? Woo! So New York doesn't get hit as bad. No, they thought they were going to get hit. Boston, I heard they got like six inches in like an hour and a half or something. They're getting this combination of flooding ice and snow. I mean, it's just horrible. Yeah, it's just I know. A buddy of mine called me today from California and asked if we were getting hit. I said, getting hit? Yeah, with 50 degree weather. He said, heck, it's almost yeah, that sunshine. I like lots of pieces. That's supposed to be 60. Huh? Is it really? Yeah. No wonder my kid is sick. <laughs> he saw the news, man. Huh? He saw the weather man one night. Not going to be well for a few days. I should check on the house and see if he's out playing basketball tomorrow. <laughs> oh, yeah. I do now. I have the call. It's broken into it. But it's the car. It's not the house. Was that in your driveway? Was, my car was in my driveway really? yeah. when it got broken too. I mean, you know, people are always in your neighborhood. It's like, I don't understand that. You know, crime is not prejudice. It'll happen in any neighborhood. I don't get that. Was it a shock? Not really. I mean, you can live anywhere in this world. I mean, it was a break in the same <laughs> It's much better than some of the things I'm hearing on the news at night, you know. You still feel violated, though. I ain't gonna lie. You still feel like, oh, six cell on my truck. Then you get to thinking about it. It's like, good thing I don't keep anything in there I should. You know, that would be not gonna work. I've never been so And today, I can imagine. That feeling. Yeah, well, I mean, people keep firearms in there. Yeah, I I can remember in college, so I was in last year in college, I stayed up over the summer, and these guys, well, so I get the knock at the door, open up the door, the guy's holding an eight glass, he's like, well, so the guy's like, hey, can I borrow your phone? I'm like, yeah, okay, and he looks at it, he's like, thank you, leaves, I go out there, it's the afternoon, I come home, get broken into my the screen on the heart just stole my little cable. How many what you used to get, get cable TV? TV. All because they had cards in them, and if you had all the packages, they could get them. That's all they, it's all they, they just touch any of my personal stuff, or, you know, they just wanted to use a cable box, right? And I remember thinking, that felt bad. Right? Like, they broke in here, you know, it wasn't even my thing. And they just still, still it's the fact that so stranger now. In your home, right? and I know it was like the frat guys across the street, you know, kind of. Well, you probably had the football pack. I remember those cars. We used to, you know, living in California, we'd go down to Mexico to fish a lot and stuff. And we'd be in Cabo, and there, there were shops set up where they sold those cards for those things that were already programmed to where you could get all the channels. It lasted maybe 30 days because of the exact bad thing when they found out you were I got another one in I tried it once and not caught it. We bought one one time. It lasted about four or five days before it was done. It was the pizza story was guy you know, open, open the door, he's like, here we go, pizza. I So he made him disappear. Next thing I know, he's like, okay, all right, what's the story? I introduced myself and I said, he's like, somebody ripped off all the pizzas out of my shoe. I'm like, hey, you made it. That looks like you do that. But again, like the brand guys across the street. I ordered at my place. 
Well, he's in not going to be there for a few days. Yeah. Well, they said that that, that girl from, was it Papa John's, that shot that, that guy that was trying to rob her or carjack or whatever he was trying to do? They said that was a setup. Right? That someone called and asked for a pizza that he delivered so that they could take the car and the money and everything from the pizza. Yeah, I didn't realize. I mean, I They probably want the employees safe inside the restaurant. <laughs> That's how I see it. No, I'm glad they stood behind her. They weren't firing her. They you know, threw her to the wall. Yeah, yeah. 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 So what committees did you land on? Uh, 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 consumer affairs and do you hear that a lot? I mean, I do. How about the radio? They said it's almost. This been a route. Supreme Court on behalf of the union is going to be in the country. Oh, you see, I have to have my ID for everything else. The most important thing I'm going to do as an adult, voting. I don't know what the reason. I don't know that they really have that good of a yeah, well, I mean, there's no fraud, but, you know, well, they say there's none, and prove it. I've asked for proof. I have never seen anyone bring me any proof. The bottom line is, don't you want to fix it before something happens? I don't know if you have to no, it does, because so, while I was in the polls, a guy handed that little thing that comes in the mail, he handed it over to someone, they gave him the ballot, and then he, he said, oh, wait, that's actually my mom's. And they were ready to, like, just hand yeah, stuff over to him, let's get this done. He go, oh, I'm sorry, I grabbed the wrong one. And they said, well, do you have your ID? He goes, yeah, I have your ID. well, you know, last year in one of our committee hearings, we actually heard that someone came in and testified and said it was on a second amendment deal, and they said, wait a minute, if I can use my, you know, electric bill or something as ID to vote, well, then why don't we try to pass a law that says that's a form of ID, and I can buy a firearm with that. Yeah, I know. I mean, he was using it to use it as a stretch, but I understood what he was getting at with that. Because like you just said, a perfect example, you know, my truck getting broken. Yeah. They could have my bill. I check my mail all the time while I'm driving away and just don't have a single truck and stuff. Oh. I didn't hear anything about it. Yeah, so the yeah, the Iraqi elections? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, y
No, no. 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 you didn't want to just sit here like he's doing. It was one of those. Sounds good. <laughs> That's good. Everyone says it flies by, and I can't believe how fast those first really? two years flew by. And my children miss with that. It's sad. <laughs> That's some of those things that they don't understand of sacrifices that you know we make. It's different when your Bart Corbett could drive. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but you know, you live an hour and a half away or something. Third, third year, second year. Third year, second year. Yeah, our children can grow up right before our eyes. So I've got it. I've got some of the first one coming tomorrow night at 6:30. Yeah, here. Like here. Is that for how it's going? Or is that that one you were talking about? As the utility overall. Yeah, okay. Energy and environment. Yeah, well, we're good for that. Okay. And then we're still trying to get used to the commission. Good news is I will not be back tomorrow night for a refresh. We're still trying to get used to the commission. Good news is I will not be back tomorrow night for a refresh. Yeah, and your third well, second was longer than that. Well, you know, <laughs> I think it is quite a burden. I think it's good. You're like me, right? 30 yeah. seconds is pretty good. Eli knows I'm more than good. Quite a Sometimes. Going from Sunday to Northern I couldn't let you just stand there that whole time. Or someone could bring it And I saw Eli, and I said, that's a perfect opportunity. Because <laughs> he knows I'm not serious when I am. That's why I didn't realize that. Because I didn't see him. Yeah. 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 Yeah.